thinking a lot about trying to be proactive for the week rather than reactive in the moment. morning. It's Ray from the Teach Better team and you just get me today for our daily drop-in that we have the opportunity to do in our group every single morning, Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Eastern. Uh, This has been a really fun thing that we started doing kind of on a whim when COVID-19 kind of began to shut down a lot of elements of education. Schools began to close And the team simply wanted to be around and accessible for all of you. And so as we started to go live every single morning, we've used this as an opportunity to just talk shop and answer questions and do everything humanly possible so that we are able to support you no matter what is going on at any point in your school, in your classroom, in your district to just be around as a brainstorm partner. So I really love these daily drop-ins and I'm more than thrilled to be coming live with you uh, this morning, Monday morning, um, to talk shop and answer questions. So I appreciate all of you kind of jumping in, saying good morning. So glad that you are here. Again, for those who don't know me, my name is Ray Hewart. I'm currently the Director of Training and Development for the Teach Better team, as well as a full-time sixth grade math teacher in Illinois. So I actually got to spend a fun weekend. Uh, You can see my puppy here is sitting with me. Uh, I had a little bit of time uh, celebrating with family and uh, just kind of had a relaxing weekend. So I'm ready to kind of kick off this week. This is kind of a perfect way to all come together. Good morning to Holly and Megan and uh, Harry. Great to see you in here. Good morning. Um, But I was excited to come and talk shop on Monday because I feel like Monday is the time where I'm thinking a lot about trying to be proactive for the week rather than reactive in the moment. And so I don't know about all of you, but I was actually up late last night finishing some things for my students. And I'm still like in that in that phase of like, okay, did I get everything set up for students? They're gonna be seeing this this new um, these new activities, these new learning opportunities for them bright and early this morning. And so uh, I'm excited to maybe dive into what my students are doing as they are navigating remote learning. I love seeing all of you still saying good morning. Great to be here. Remember, if you are listening to this video after the fact, like over on YouTube or as a bonus episode of Teach Better Talk podcast, this is just a time where we are talking shop. And while you can continue to be a consumer, we really want to challenge you to be a like active participant. This is a time where you can ask questions either about the team, about remote learning, about the packages the team is putting on to support districts, about webinars that we continue to put on. This is really a space where it's an open forum. Uh, so choose to join our private pa- Facebook group so that you can be uh, in the comments here where everybody's still in the morning Say good morning. I love this four minutes in. This is really family coming together. That's why I love this group. So um, remember that if you are commenting, you do want to put your name at the end of the question. I know a lot of you already know that because you've been with us from the beginning. But because we're streaming through Be Live, with you, which you can see like with this this frame around me in our picture. Um, the Facebook doesn't allow us to necessarily see who's commenting. So when you put your name, they were able to speak directly to you. Uh, so good morning to everyone. I love, we are covering all over, not only states, but also uh, Mexico is popping in. I love this. I hope you're all starting your Monday morning off well and you've had your coffee and you're relaxing. Um, Mother's Day was Yesterday, it was also my mom's birthday, so she got a twofer this year. I want to celebrate all of you that um, are parents, that are mothers. Happy Mother's Day. We are so happy. We hope you took some time for yourself. And if you didn't, then your homework assignment is to do that for today because that's so, so, so important. And during this crazy time, we definitely need to find amazing celebrations. So I'm so thrilled that I saw so many people, even at a distance, celebrating their families. It's so, so wonderful. So as you're here with us this morning, feel free to throw in. Uh, I'd love to kick off the day actually talking about what you have planned for this week for your students. I know a lot of you popping in are classroom teachers or administrators or coaches. I'd love to hear about what you're doing this week that you are uh, able to support your students with. Uh, For me, my students are starting a brand new unit. 
Um, as a lot of you already know, uh, my classroom is kind of strange. I use uh, the grid method mastery framework that allows my students to kind of personalize their learning pathway throughout every single unit and really uh, give them permission to master standards as they move forward, master content before moving on to more challenging content. So I love that avenue of our self-paced classroom. But additionally, I also use the Teach Further model, which allows my students to actually be immersed in internships to find the relevancy of their content. And so while I've enjoyed that, I actually like took a step away from it as uh, remote learning came to fruition simply because there was so much going on and as a teacher, I couldn't handle it. I know we've talked a lot about that in these conversations here that it is tricky. Um, we were kind of all in survival mode and we weren't necessarily going to those tools that we know are best practice or going to those outlets that we know we have to have in our classroom. We were just trying to get through the day and it seemed like information was changing by the hour. And so just getting through the day was enough. And, and for me, I let a lot of things slip through the cracks and um, I really regret that. That's not something I'm proud of. But I was so thrilled that I was still able to do this partnership with Lego. It's an amazing unit that we end up doing at the end of the year. And my students were looking forward to it and kept asking. And they were so disappointed. They've been seeing pictures about this unit all year long. So I did want to make sure I could still deliver that to them, even though it's different in a remote learning setting. So my students are uh, getting that information bright and early this morning to kick off this unit. And... It's really like ugh, killing me, but uh, it's our last unit. So we have our last day of remote learning on the 22nd of March, no, of May, duh, uh, which literally is like two weeks from now. So my, my students are ending their year building um, their Lego suits that I would be more than happy to answer questions about. Uh, but I release my content by week. So my students do uh, have a, a week chunks of assignment, but because we're doing more of a unit based with this uh, specific, a specific topic with geometry and surface area and volume and all these other 3D shapes that we're working with, I actually did release it, the entire unit uh, for them this morning. So it's a two week long unit. I created a grid that scaffolded that information for them and uh, they got that bright and early this morning. So I already know, I already got a comment or two in Google Classroom about students saying, oh, it's finally here, right? We're so excited. So um, I'm just really stoked to see how that all comes about and again, more than happy to answer questions about that as we continue forward because I'm not only in love with this unit, but also I know a lot of you in this group are very active in trying to provide engaging remote learning opportunities and wanting to give students experiences over anything else during this time. And a lot of you do use a self-paced classroom. So a lot of the management of how I'm moving through this might actually be similar to what you're experiencing in your own classroom. So feel free to throw things here. Uh, I love, I challenged you a little bit ago, if you're just popping in, uh, to kind of tell us what you're doing this week and how you are communicating with students, what activities you're doing, what you're doing for parents. Um, so we already have a number of different comments. Carrie's popping in here saying, it, it's our next to last week. We are winding down. I uh, have no idea what to do next week, the last week. So Carrie, I think a lot of teachers are kind of in the same space where we've been in survival mode, kind of like I alluded to before, but now we kind of like know when the end date is. And, and that's really important because we've truly been operating day by day. And then we had this gift of being able to operate by week. But that final day, knowing that school is ending and that we are no longer going to be in a remote learning opportunity brings up a lot of other emotions, right? How do we implement kind of like the end of the year celebrations? What are these other pieces we're trying to do? And how do you make it purposeful? Because like you, Carrie, you're like, okay, I have a plan for this week, but next week is the last week. And how do I make that impactful? How do I make it purposeful? How do I make it a, you know, a celebration? It's actually um, one of the topics of our free teacher webinar series that we're doing right now is that we have a six week, 12 part webinar series. And actually the, the third session is today at two o'clock central, three o'clock Eastern with Chad, where we're talking about a lot of different topics. One of them is like engaging students and uh, end of year celebrations. And we purposely did that uh, that's the topic for next week and the following week. And it's it's very strategic because we knew that a lot of us were going to be in this phase of wanting to like kind of close out the year the right way. And so while I, I know that it's not until this afternoon or next week or whatever, 
I will tell you those um, those webinar episodes that are not only being shared on Monday, but then having that Q and A debrief on Friday are specifically designed knowing that you can sit in that webinar and take tactical takeaways right away to do that week. Uh, we actually had a really great uh, conversation on our team about, you know, are we doing the celebration at the end of the year too late? Like, are we going to already have to be planned? And the reality is, is that we're never too late to start talking about it. But these strategies are going to truly be things that you can pop into the webinar on Monday at two o'clock central and then implement something Tuesday morning. Uh, we really want them to be easy takeaways, powerful takeaways, and really um, useful things for our teachers. So if you're not signed up for that webinar series, it's completely free. Uh, you go to teachbetter.com slash webinar series. And we're not only bringing together members of the Teach Better team like Chad Orshevsky and myself, but also uh, Kevin Butler's joining us, Mandy Freilich, um, Jennifer Hans Apple. I mean, just great people trying to do amazing work. And as we com continue to kind of have the next few weeks focus on students, the last few weeks focus on educator mental health, which is such an important topic, whether you're in remote learning or just finishing it up. And uh, how do we transition back in August where no matter what's going on in your world, that is a, a definitely a, a powerful conversation we need to be having. So um, love that you brought that up, Carrie, and we are uh, going to be partners with you in that. Uh, that was a part of kind of why I designed a two week unit at the end. I really want to like go out with a bang. So for my students, we're building, uh, constructing those Lego suits this, the last week versus um, doing it this week and then trying to find something else. So again, we really want to make sure those are good use of our students' time. Uh, Lindsay jumped in and said, this week focuses, uh, focus for me is helping to support staff. I'm a K-12 behavior specialist in continued connection and engagement with students and continue our weekly parent video training series. I'm so glad, Lindsay, that sounds like a great idea. And I love uh, that as behavior specialists, your work is so important. I'm very confident that teachers uh, could utilize your support and expertise. Uh, we have another comment here that says, this is my last week of lessons. Next week is makeup work. Still finding ways to stay connected even after the week. Yes, this is a very strange time as we, I, I don't know if you guys are having the same nostalgia, but I'm kind of, I kind of went through this last, uh, last night as I was finalizing the final details and releasing my information to students that this is like, I'm like missing them. I'm not quite sure how to end the year, right? It's just feeling very, um, broken. Broken is not the right word, but it kind of does. It just seems very strange. This is usually a very fun and like high energy time. So uh, definitely understand. But I do like the idea of ending, like giving yourself a few days at the very end for that makeup work. So if a student didn't meet a deadline, how can we still evaluate mastery? It's a great idea. Uh, another comment from Lindsay says, we've got seven weeks here in New York until we end in June. So it's important to keep this momentum, absolutely. And it seems like a lot of different schools are in different places. I know some schools that are ending similar to my district on the 22nd of May, which seems very early to me. That that seems to be the earliest I've heard schools ending. But then a lot of schools, uh, the majority of schools are, are going into June, going into late June. And so this is not a time where we're really wrapping things up, more so a time where we're building that momentum. I love that you brought that up, Lindsay. And I'm hoping that um, that's actually not to bring up this webinar series again, but that's truly why this webinar series, the first two weeks, which we're now starting the second, we're focused on structure and management because we still have teachers that are struggling with what this looks like, big picture, um, finding a comfort, feeling like we're doing really purposeful work rather than just surviving. Like I've said numerous times, transitioning from being reactive to proactive. And so last week in that webinar series, uh, we focus on remote learning essentials. And this week we're focusing on the grid method plus remote learning and making those connections with a really intentional, um, asynchronous, like purposeful, uh, self-paced classroom. So, um, you know, then we'll transition into the celebrations and the engagement and all that important things as well. But I, like you're noting, I mean, still having seven weeks to go, we're still in the thick of it. And so trying to make that, that powerful is important. Uh, I'm, there are so many comments now, I'm completely uh, not going to be able to read all of these. If you're watching on YouTube or um, you are listening, this is a bonus episode. There's so many amazing educators jumping in here that I'd love to have you join our private Facebook group to read. We're seeing everything from, oh, I'm a AP US history teacher, so we have a test on Friday, to I have students doing um, 
really, uh, really fun ref uh, self reflections, what they liked or disliked. That that's really important data for us to have now, but also to use in the future. Uh, we're in the middle of a grid. So this is Holly, who's trying to talk about how she's modifying her um, self-paced learning opportunities for an e-learning atmosphere. So Holly, I hope that you join our free teacher webinar series because that's actually the topic today, which will be really cool. Um, but I love to hear that you guys are doing so much for your students to really keep them engaged and having that ownership over their learning because that's how you're going to get buy-in right now. Students are in the, a very strange situation just like we are. And when we can give them that opportunity to take ownership over their learning, it really makes a massive difference. So good morning to everyone that is popping in. I'm so thrilled that you're here. I see Brad and Adam. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, we're about 15 minutes in. So just to recap, this daily drop-in we do every single morning in our private Facebook group to just be a sounding board. And while I know a lot of us are kind of reflecting on where we're at currently, this is also a time to think ahead and talk about um, what you not only have planned for the week, but what you might have planned for the next two or three weeks or ideas you're still struggling with or you know, a, a difficult parent email that you're still trying to find the right way to respond to or challenging student situations that you're trying to support from a distance. Um, it has been a whirlwind for a lot of us and, and me, myself included, you know, my, my uh, amazing team that I work with. I'm, I'm a full-time sixth grade math teacher and I work in a middle school team of incredible people. And we've had, you know, a parent die and how we are supporting, you know, a student from a distance, you know, who's grieving and mourning the loss of a parent is absolutely impossible. Uh, we've done everything from trying to plan interdisciplinary units together to just doing content in isolation and our core content and the pros and cons of that. We've talked endlessly about the need for student reflection and for students to have voice in um, any sort of learning opportunities throughout the week so we can get a better gauge on what our students are actually experiencing, what their home lives look like. Uh, we've had amazing celebrations uh, where students have been able to give shout outs to family members. Uh, we've had wonderful video calls every single day. Uh, last week, we had an entire week of scavenger hunts that we played on those video calls. I mean, this really is an amazing time where we can talk about almost anything to make sure that you as an educator are showing up in the best way possible for your students. I know that if you are somebody who is actually um, a part of that teacher webinar series, you, you heard me talk about this before, but for me personally, uh, my students have a number of different things that I'm trying to continue to instill in them is a norm of our classroom. So the management of our classroom more or less stayed the same. Students are tracking their success and they're advocating for themselves. So that's been wonderful. Um, every single morning, my students are participating in daily challenges. That could be anything from a, a physical activity of doing 100 jumping jacks. Uh, sometimes we give them a video and they need to um, incorporate their five senses to actually feel like they're in the video itself. Um, other challenges included them actually getting their family members involved or having that strategic mathematical thinking. Um, one of my favorite ones we did if you, like at the very beginning was that they had 10 items and they had to, to build the largest tower and trying to find ways to measure the towers and compete for who got the largest one and be really strategic. So again, that's been a really fun way to kind of get a check-in every morning with my students. Uh, and then I post content by week. And like I said earlier, actually this week I posted, I posted it in a two week span because we looked at a full unit. So students this week are uh, building life-size Lego suits. So my students are actually partnering with Lego through a themed internship and we're using the grid method to navigate the whole thing. Uh, it kicks off with students checking out a video example of what a life-size Lego suit look like. Uh, it's actually a suit that students need to be able to wear. Uh, so it is uh, going to be very large. And uh, as students go through learning about surface area and volume and 3D shapes and nets through our geometry sequence, um, students are then going to construct either a part of the suit or the entire suit uh, out of the resources that they have at home. So some of my students would usually use cardboard because that's a, a resource that we bring in in the classroom that they manipulate. Uh, but this year we decided we're going to just have it be open ended. And as long as they're using shapes and nets and all these other elements, you can build it out of anything. So I think that we're going to actually see 
more creativity than ever because students are going to have the ability to find high school, uh, household items. And at some capacity, I'm like, oh, it's such a bummer. This is so different than we've done. But the truth is, is it's truly a blessing. How amazing is it going to be that now our um, students are getting to explore with new materials and have the brainstorming partners of their family and everything else so that uh, they're able to accomplish this task. So I'm really excited for this unit. I think there's gonna be great things that happen. I'm sorry, there's been so many amazing comments so far as I went off topic. Uh, I know that Dave Schmidt was in here. Hey Dave, good to see you this morning. It says this summer will be amazing. For so many, they create their first grids and set up new awesome units. Yes, I think the grids are going to be so helpful for August. I'm thrilled to uh, chat with the teachers that are exploring that. Um, I'm seeing comments like, I agree, look forward to starting mine. I love using poetry in science. I frequently try to integrate the arts into science lessons. Yes, we really need to approach content in that interdisciplinary mindset. Nothing in the world is done in isolation. So why does our teaching have to be? So if you can incorporate... Uh, you know, a multitude of concepts that's going to be so wonderful. Um, uh, it looks like I love definitely redefining mine. This is a time to really expose all areas I need within my grid. Yes, very true. I like this hashtag Team Ray. That's very, see, Jeff Gargas, I hope you're listening that we got a hashtag Team Ray going on. I have been seeing all those hashtag Team Ray shirts that have been selling in our swag store. So I am, I'm thrilled. Thank you for the shout out there. Um, uh, Carrie says, we work with Chad late this month to write. Oh, good. Very excited. So Carrie, if there's ever anything you need with the grid, Chad is an outstanding resource. I know districts across the country are, are collaborating with our team in a lot of different ways. I'm also just, so you know, cause we're family in this Facebook group. I'm happy to collaborate on a grid. If you are kind of feeling like, oh, I'm, I would love to do this, but I wouldn't even know where to get started. We have a free course at teachbetteracademy.com. We have a full course, which actually goes through the workshop and the workbook of designing grids. That's in the academy as well. Uh, and then like I've discussed with many of you on the phone and in private DM you know, messaging, uh, we'd love, our whole team is more than happy to collaborate on things because you know, if you're a science teacher and you're looking at a science example, that can be really helpful. And so while I know that the grid method is a tool that I know teachers are using K through 12 or K through college, I have a college professor I'm working with now that's utilizing it at, I, that at uh, Illinois State University. Um, either way, it's really helpful sometimes to like see those actual examples. So I love collaborating with teachers that can kind of have that that brainstorming buddy that can sketch out some designs for you. Uh, so we are here and that those academy courses are very good places to start. Um, I love this. Yes, poetry is so great. Um, I have new poems each week. Great. I should do a poem for our daily challenge, like give them a poem and have, have them respond to it. I uh, love this more. <laughs> Team Ray. Yes, Ray gave you credit this morning, even though the Ohio boys are sticking together. Adam, I know you got to You guys stick with me. You don't don't fall into Jeff Gar Gargas's trap. That's no good. Um, you missed my hashtag team rate earlier. OK, thank you, Alex. I, I appreciate it. So uh, we're about 22 minutes into our live video. I'm so glad that so many of you are here. Uh, it's always great to not only see our familiar faces that have been with us from the beginning when we started this and, you know, March 16th, I think was our first day of making sure that our team was available every single morning for you. But now, I mean, gosh, we're into May. Um, and uh, I, these actually daily drop-ins have been such a blessing from our team. We've loved getting to do them, not only because we get to answer your questions live, but also just highlight the amazing expertise we have on our team and in our network. Being able to bring in guests has been so fun. I know a lot of you commenting are actually guests that have been a part of our daily drop-ins and we, so appreciate that you're willing to share your time, your experience, your expertise during this as well. Uh, and if you missed any of those, they're saved in our private Facebook group. They're all on YouTube. They're all as bonus episodes. This has been so great to like amplify people's stories. We still have two more weeks of these daily drop-ins. They're actually going to end the Friday before um, Memorial Day. It will be our last daily drop-in, uh, but it will be a powerful one. And might I say, we have some in incredible guests that are going to be joining us for those uh, daily drop-ins for the next two weeks. So it's going to be just so fun, so special. Um, I know I posed a question to you earlier. I'm going to pose another question to you now. I want to hear about how you are communicating to families and how that's going. 
The reason I asked that, uh, so if you, while I'm kind of sharing with you about this idea, I'd love for you to kind of type in your comments here about how you are effectively communicating with your parents and supporting your students' families beyond just your students' learning opportunities. The reason I ask is because um, in our webinar series that we've been doing, and I'm sorry I keep bringing this up, um, that was like kind of like the focus of conversation. Uh, I was surprised by that. I don't know why, because obviously parent communication is essential. And so we're talking about remote learning essentials. It made sense that that would be something people would ask about. Uh, but I was extremely surprised simply because I was so thrilled that the, the little tidbits that we shared out were so helpful to people. So one of my main things that you guys know I talk about all the time is doing video emails to families. Uh, I actually, after this, am going to be recording, recording my video for my families this week and sending that to them bright and early this morning. I didn't get to recording the video yesterday, so I'm going to do it today. And um, it's going to be super quick. I'm going to close out this um, Facebook stream for our daily drop-in. Uh, in a little bit after we, you know, have answered the questions for this morning. And I'm going to turn on my camera on my computer that I'm using right now. So I'll look the exact same. And I'm just going to go through explaining that I miss them, that uh, I'm really excited about the unit that we're doing for our students that is a two-week unit. And I'm just going to celebrate some of the amazing experiences we've had with this Lego uh, activity that we're doing and kind of get people excited. So I use these videos to allow students to not only stay updated and parents to stay updated, but also to like set the tone for the week. I want them to be excited. I want them to see my face. I want them to hear me. And I want to tell them that I miss them because I think everybody kind of benefits from hearing, you know, I miss you. Like, I'm just like some of you, I mean, you, with people popping in here, Bree's in here, Tammy's in here, Joe, Mark Horn's in here. We, we just, I, I miss you guys. Like I, I've seen you, a lot of you I've met in real life, in person, at conferences or at the Teach Better conference last year. It's different. I think that it's important that we um, tell people that we care about them and keep them in communication because some of the biggest feedback we've gotten is the frustration of that miscommunication during this time. And any way that we can fix that and help people feel better, better cope with this, this this challenging time is important. So I love them seeing so far um, some great answers. I see video calls, text messages through Google Voice, class dojo, emails. Yes, these are so good. Um, love your idea about the videos to emails. Yes, I try and do that every single uh, week, but sometimes I do it more often than that. Um, students and families stay in contact with me throughout the day with assignments and logistics. Okay, so you can see that they're like signing into things or they are like checking that they've turned in elements. So that's super helpful. Um, I love seeing Google Classroom as a tool. Yep text calls, emails, Google Meets. Uh, these are great suggestions. I love this. Well, this all started COVID. I wrote my students letters. I got a few responses of letters too. Yes, who just posted that? Uh, Elijah. Yeah, Elijah, I did the same thing last week. And I have loved getting either students writing me a letter back or I got an email based off of the letter I wrote. So we actually split up as a team. We wrote our students uh, postcards. And so uh, it was just kind of fun. It took some time. Like, honestly, it took a few hours to write all of them. Uh, it was definitely a time commitment. But it was so nice uh, for students to kind of email me. I got them a late afternoon on Friday because I sent it to them, like, Wednesday, Thursday. So they'd be just getting them this weekend. And um, students were, like, shocked. They're like, oh, my gosh, I got mail. How fun is that? So just another way to kind of share in the excitement. It's so fun. I do want to give a shout out to Jody. Jody, it's so good to see you in here. I miss you too. That's so fun. Um, all right. So parent communication is definitely important. Uh, while I think there's a lot of different ideas shared in here, the whole point is that you need to make sure you're communicating because just as Adam has right here in his comments, parents are our strongest allies right now. They always have been, but it really has become clear that that is something we uh, we have to enjoy. So and and take you know some some true care with is making our parents feel comfortable and having them stay those allies. I wrote a blog um, series. There was a few of them, uh, and I want to say it must have been last August or it was even two years ago. But it was a number of different blogs that that we put together for the team talking about uh, parents being allies versus roadblocks and how you know if we all move together. And this mentality of like being married, right? Like we are all in this together, finding the success for your child. We get so much more than if we are like constantly being stopped with these roadblocks of parents questioning us and questioning um, 
our, our efforts to best support their child. And so if you right now are struggling with that in any capacity that we can help with, uh, feel free to throw that in the comments. But truly, it is it is the truth that our parents are just as important in this instance as everybody else. We want to make sure they are supported uh, more than ever. So uh, I feel for you, families at home that have working parents and children at home. It's it's a challenging time, but it's amazing to communicate with them. And I think the most important element, and I don't know how much how many of you are actually doing this, but folding in parent communication to your routine is gonna be the main source of success for you. Uh, early out of my career, I never did that. Parent communication was like a to-do list, something I had to accomplish. Now it is a part of my routine. So not only am I every single week making a video email for parents, every single day making sure my students are updating my students, um, I use specific procedures, routines, and technology tools that allow my parents to stay updated just as it allows me to stay updated. So I talk a lot about how Seesaw is something that, I mean, I literally talk about this all the time, so I'm sorry if you've heard this a million times for me, but Seesaw is easy because students are reflecting every single day, setting a goal for themselves every single day in Seesaw. Now that is of a huge benefit for me and that is of a huge benefit to my students because them and I, I mean, we are going through hearing what the reflection is, helping them set a goal, we're staying up to date. But what I really enjoy about Seesaw is that you can also link the account to a parent. So the parents are getting the same benefit. They're getting a, a, a notification on their phone that their child has done a reflection and set a goal. So whether they're at work because they're an essential worker or they're at home in a different room working or they're sitting next to them, they are staying up to speed on what their child is doing. Uh, and so the more that we can kind of like incorporate parent communication into our day to day is really, really important. And I know a lot of you are commenting about Seesaw. I know a lot of you use it. I won't lie to you. Like Seesaw is one of a million different things you can use. It's just been the easiest one and most simplest one for me because I purposefully incorporated into that goal setting and reflection. So it's just very easy uh, tool because, you know, we use it every single day. And so to be able to use it every day and use it to communicate checking the box in multiple areas. So that's been really great. Holly's saying, this is what I need to improve on parent communication routines, not just when there's something bad or good, but all the time, it will help build a connection for my families. Yeah, Holly, you know, I think parent communication is tricky because as we look at parent communication, it's not only about what you're communicating, but also how you're communicating it. I, I don't know, Holly, what, what type of student makeup you have or what your parents are like, but a lot of my families don't speak English. A lot of my families um, don't use technology. So trying to find the right avenue to communicate with them is really important. Um, personally, I have always had more success with emails and specifically video emails. Um, I've talked about this a million times, but my emails are very short. They start with a hello and I miss you. Something about how I'm like sending a virtual hug to them. I go into, I attach a video with the details of um, like me just sharing a little bit of a video, somewhere between three to five minutes. And then I have three bullet points that summarizes the video. So even if you didn't have time to watch the video, here are the three key things I want you to get out of it. And then I, I sign my name. The video is then, my hope was that they could click it open on their phone while holding a baby making dinner and they can still get an update on the classroom. And so uh, I like to keep them three to five minutes. It doesn't need to be long. And a lot of it is, is sharing my appreciation, sharing my love for what we're doing, sharing that I miss them, and then giving them, again, those three bullet points where the main things that they need to focus on this week that, that they don't want to make sure that they don't miss. Um, so that's one easy way. I really like, I don't know if you guys, if, if there's anyone in here that can kind of um, like share something about this. In our Teach Better Academy, we have a ton of different courses. A lot of them are free. Uh, but if you have our Academy membership, then you get all of them for $9 a month. So regardless, if you're part of our Academy, we have a free course. So like, like any teacher can take it. And it's on social media basics. Jeff Gargas did it. And I loved this course because he went through uh, not only like very common social media outlets, but he did it from a teacher perspective. So it was how can you actually use social media to um, better connect with families. And not only that, because that idea in and of itself is valuable, but um, he went through and gave like five or six examples for each platform on how you can use it to better communicate with families. So if you're somebody who's who knows 
that you have parents on Facebook or Instagram and you're not quite sure how to use it so it can actually support your classroom, that course truly, I mean, he had like five or six examples for Snapchat. I don't think I would ever recommend Snapchat being the main source of communication in your classroom, but he had amazing ideas. So I would just challenge you if, if, if however you want to communicate, whatever the best fit is, it's not only through text, it's not only through video calls or emails, we can utilize resources that we know our parents are already using, like social media, to communicate about our classroom. It's a really great choice. I'm really just excited. So good things here. Uh, so many comments so far. It is funny, those of you that are talking about recording videos and needing to find a quiet place to record, I totally understand. That's another benefit of why I like to keep my videos short, because then I don't get interruptions. Uh, even in this video right now, as I'm recording with you, I have a puppy like sitting right here and he keeps popping up for those of you that are, that are seeing this on video. It is what it is, people. So there's some balance between definitely wanting to have a quiet space because you want to make sure you can be heard. But also like we are all in this situation. Give yourself some grace. It does not need to be perfect at all. These live videos are not perfect for you, but they're still valuable because we are all together and able to talk shop. So even if it's not the most professional video ever, your family, your families just want to see you. So it's okay that you can have a feature every so often of your daughter or son popping into the video. It's, it is what it is. So I love it. Um, I uh, appreciate all of you that are popping in here. There's been so many great uh, comments, not only about how you're communicating with parents, but a lot of different avenues. I don't want to miss any questions if you're posing questions here. Uh, but we have been live for about 40 minutes. So uh, this is going to be like my my shout out, if you have anything that you specifically want me to discuss, please throw it in the comments so I can make sure I get to it before the end of our video. I love, <laughs> Brad says, your puppy always does that. It's part of the charm. It's true. You know, I don't know about you guys, and you know, everybody has their different situations at home. Mark saying that the cat and dog always interrupt. Uh, but for me, I, I have a very quiet space in my office, and I have one puppy who is very well trained sleeping on the couch, and you can like hear him snoozing except the other, there you go, right there. Um, I let one time sit in this chair with me and you know that I've been a goner ever since, right? Like he really w used to be so like nice and tame here and it was fine. And then when I do a live video, I kick him out so that, you know, he wasn't sitting here. But now during these videos, if I don't let him sit up here, he jumps up halfway through anyway and that scares the daylights out of me. So better just to let him sit here and occasionally pop up and, this is just a little picture into Ray Hewitt outside of, you know, teaching teachers, but also dog, you know, lover as well. So it's funny. Uh, my kids get to see my cat. Yes, exactly. So the cat jumps in every so often, as long as you can try and manage it. So it's not as much of a distraction as just like a, a cute little celebration for a moment in time Then uh, it works out. Also, it helps that like keeping the camera like a little higher, like my puppy here is about 20 pounds. He's a little short. So he has to make an effort like he is now to be in this camera versus if it was a little lower, you'd see, you'd just see all the snuggles. So, <laughs> so fun. Uh, I do love this. Good morning. Yes. So, so great to see everybody. Thank you for being here. So uh, we are going to end our daily drop in video today. Thank you to all of you that joined us and continue to join us for our daily drop in. We'll be live all week long, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at 7 a.m. Central, 8 a.m. Eastern, uh, sometimes with guests, sometimes just with members of the Teach Better team. But every single time we're live, regardless of who's joining us, our entire mission is to not only give you food for thought, ideas, give you reminders about how we can continue to find success in these times. But also if you ever have a question and you just need a brainstorming buddy, this really is a environment to utilize this for. So let us know if you need anything. I do wanna give uh, one, a, a few reminders actually. One is we have a webinar series going on that's free for teachers that you can register for. We do a session every Monday afternoon and Friday afternoon. Um, it's free, but it goes over um, some sort of teaching on Monday and then a Q&A debrief on Friday. Uh, we have amazing topics. You can see all those at teachbetter.com slash webinar series. So join us for that. 
Uh, this week also kicks off our administrator mastermind. So if you're currently an administrator or district leader, you're more than welcome to join us every single Tuesday at two o'clock central, three o'clock Eastern. Every single Tuesday from now on, we are gonna bring uh, administrators and district leaders together to give us a safe space to talk shop about the challenging time that we're in, but also in hopes of being proactive. That's also free. So just register for that mastermind session at teachbetter.com slash mastermind. And that is for any administrator who is looking to just have kind of a safe space to talk shop and learn from other district leaders across the country to see how they are dealing with ideas like graduation, parent communication, locker clean out, you know, teacher rapport, you know, whatever, whatever comes up for the week. Uh, it's an open forum to brainstorm. It's kind of like a round table atmosphere. So thank you to those that have joined us. Now we are setting a permanent time for that on Tuesday. So you can put it in your calendar and plan for it and make your life a little bit easier. Um, in addition to that, I'm going to give a, I'm going to say final, but who knows whether it's going to pop up into my brain. The other thing I'm going to tell you is Teach Better conference proposals are open through the end of the month. So if you're somebody who joined us for Teach Better Conference 2019, uh, that was about the best weekend of my life. I've talked about it at, at length if you want to hear more, but we really would love you to share your story uh, throughout this time. So please consider uh, submitting your own proposal at teachbetterconference.com. They'll be open through the month. You can join the stage with uh, obviously those of the teachers better team, but also Mandy Fralick, Sarah Thomas, Dr. Valerie Camille Jones from the Ron Clark Academy, Neil Gupta, George Valenzuela, CJ Reynolds, Allison Epsi. Uh, there's just, I mean, amazing, amazing, amazing people. Peace Loan Joseph and uh, three of them were just released today. So Matt Miller, I mean, it goes on and on. We have amazing educators that are all going to come together in one space and continue to celebrate education, give us new ideas. And we'd love to have you a part of that, a part of that experience. So that will be October 2nd and 3rd. The proposals end, they close this month. So make sure you go share your story. I am so confident, guys, that there's about a million other things the team is doing that we I'm not commenting on, like the amazing Comeback Better packages that we just released last week and everything else. You can get blogs, all these details, podcasts and everything in between, free downloads, courses, whatever. Go to teachbetter.com. You know that's all there. But these are all designed for you. So if there's ever something you're looking for, email us, DM us. We'll get it for you. So have a wonderful rest of your Monday. We appreciate you. Uh, and we will see you tomorrow morning for our daily drop-in. See you later.